What up everybody? This is going to be a video tutorial on setting up a very very small network uh, to start off with in a Cisco environment. Working programming with Cisco uh, routers and switches and it, this, is, this is extremely basic. Uh, so this is basically going to be I want to make sure PC1, 2 and the router can communicate all together. And this is what this introductory video is going to be discussing. So what we need to start off with is well we know this is networking what network are we on what IP address are we on well this is a new network we gotta determine that we gotta figure out what we want to do and this is a local network we're not dealing with anything outside so we've got class A class B class C what do we want to do well we've got two hosts here let's just go ahead and do a class C and we'll subnet it down to eight hosts or six hosts actually Okay, so what we're going to do is first let's go ahead and figure out what we're going to do. So let's open up the router. This is going to bring up basically our command pro initial, initial setup configuration. And I'm going to hit no. And that's basically going to get us started. Here's our, here's our command line interface. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and, and I am going to basically go through this under the assumption you already somewhat know your commands and all that good stuff. I'm not going to be uh, basically breaking it down. I'm going to do shortcuts. So this is I'm going to go ahead and enable and enter the privilege mode. I'm then going to go ahead and enter the configuration terminal. This is global configuration mode. So we are now going to go ahead and rename the router. Let's rename it to R1. Router 1. That's That seems reasonable enough. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, enable secret Cisco. Good. There we go. Cisco is a very weak password. I'm just doing it for our, for just for us. Okay. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we are now going to go ahead and set up a message of the day. Let's go ahead, banner, MOTD, enter. Uh, let's go ahead and do and authorized personnel only. Ah, stay out. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and finish that. Kind of makes it look cool. And we're going to end off with that. Alright, so now with that, we're going to go ahead and secure the console and the virtual terminal ports. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to enter the console port first. Oops. And we're going to password Cisco. Everything's going to be Cisco. Login. Enables the login for it. Without that, we can't log in. All right. So from there, I'm now going to enter. Oh, and I'm, there is a nice little uh, command here. Logging synchronous. And that's going to make it to where when you're editing your command line, you don't have to worry about all those messages. Great messages, however, but, you know, do I really need to be seeing them right now? Do I need them in the middle of my way? So logging synchronous kind of gets rid of that. <laughs> and puts it all on a new line, you won't continue typing on some different line. Okay, so with that, we're going to enter the virtual terminal mode, or the lines, and we're going to password that too. Alright, so we got the basic security down, extremely basic security. Okay, so from there, what we'll go ahead and do is now figure out what we want to make the IP address. So we're going to make it extremely basic, Let's, and we have to enter the interface configuration mode. Which basically, once we're in the once we're in the configuration mode, we enter interface. That's the port I put it on. We are now uh, configuring the specific interface. Nothing else. I love how direct Cisco routers and switches can be. I mean, once you're in somewhere, it you're in it, and I mean you're focused on that one point. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm gonna make this IP address 192.168.101. There we go. And now. If you know how to subnet, <clears throat> you'll know where I'm going with this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a 248 network. This is basically going to allow me, if you know you're subnetting, with six hosts. Seven being the broadcast, point seven being the broadcast, point eight being the next network. So we're going to do that. We're going to do a 248. <clears throat> okay, with that being said, enter. Now, we've got the IP address in there. Are we are we done? Well, let's look at what we got over to the left here. We got good connectivity here, and we have well, it's powered off here. Let's see why. IP. 
Alright, well, it says I've got the IP address, we're up, however, administratively down. If you do work with these routers, you do know administratively down means it is not turned on. So what we need to do, we need, since we are still in that interface, how do we turn it on? No shut. No shutdown. No shutdown will enable the link and it will become active. And now if I do show IP interface brief again, we're up and up. All working great. Gotta love it. Okay. So, now what's the, if, make sure we are do ping 192, and the reason why I do ping, if I did ping 192.168.101 here, invalid, I need to go all the way out or end, and I can ping out here. Great, we got the default gateway set, but when I'm in the terminal and I'm in an interface I don't want to leave, a do command does it from there. So there you go, just so you know. All right, so from there, we've got that set. Now, let's give our PC some IPs. So now what we're gonna do, is we're gonna IP config. Now, the, this, these routers don't automatically by default have a DHCP server and the addressing pool set. So if I do DHCP, it's not gonna give it to me. It just won't. It'll may bring up an error of some sort. DHCP request failed. That's because there's nothing to negotiate back and forth with. It's not set. So I'm going to have to statically set it to, let's do 192.168.1.2. Now we got 255, 255, 255, 248. 192.168.1.1. All right. Let's do the second one. Let's do static again. Same with this. This can request IP address all day. However, the end result's going to be DHCP request failed. So we're going to statically set this to 192.168.1.3. And we're going to do 255.255.255.248.192.168.1.1. Now, we don't have a DNS server. We, didn't, we don't have a server set up. So we can't get it set <laughs> with, along with DHCP either. So we're going to go ahead and just X that out, saves it, and let's see if we've got communication. Go to the IP config states I'm on, do 168.1.3, and I've got a link. God, I love replies. I love pinging. Pinging is amazing. All right, and of course, you could ping yourself, but most importantly, can this ping back? And we got it. We're good. And overall result, we could ping our default gateway. So once we get an ISP and once we set up our uh, NAT and PAT, then we're we're pretty good. We're good. All right. So we have set up basic security configurations. We have enabled our secret passwords. We have set the message of the day. And we have renamed the router along with turning it on and setting up the IP addressing scheme we decided to use. Uh, it's, it's a very small, <laughs> uh, if, I were if this were my start of the business, I would just probably uh, maybe use a uh, one t .128 subnet, uh, but you know, for scalability, or, e or even a .64 subnet, uh, but this is just fine, it, it just something simple, and we've got great communication. So, I hope this has been informative for you, and I would like to thank you for viewing.